The Lullbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Breath of the Wild again. I actually got up off my ass from playing that game to a show today. <laughs> I, I was I was impressed to get a message from you. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, I should do a show today. Pause. Okay, unpause. Let me just get this one shrine out of the way, and then <laughs> then we'll do this. And I'm with uh, Jeremy Heisen. I don't know. Burglar. Heisen Hyrule. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Heisen Hyrule. And uh, and, and I'm Jim Jesus. I think. I don't know. I've been linked for the last three weeks. <laughs> my life has been all consumed by this game. Oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever. Um, so yeah, there's lots to talk about. That's not uh, Zelda, which is clearly the <laughs> best game of last year. Uh, anybody who doesn't think think that it's a fucking moron. Um, <laughs> I haven't even played it yet, and I would have to agree with that statement. It's it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a. Um, a switch for Christmas, and that's pretty much all I've been doing. And I, I was like, I, okay, I, here's the games that I need to get. I definitely need to get the new Mario game. I need to get this game. I bought Double Dragon 4, and you know, I played it for the one day that it took from, from me to get that to getting my uh, the other part of my Christmas present in the mail because they were by, by two different shipping companies. So I was like, I'll get one game just to tie me over until I get uh, <laughs> until I get until I get uh, Breath of the Wild, and then it then I was like, nope, this is gonna be my life. I put all the other things I was planning on buying to the side. It's like I'm gonna be playing this for the next three years. So why <laughs> bother paying sixty bucks for <laughs> all these other games that I'm not gonna touch for three years because this is gonna be consuming my life. Um, for better or for wow. worse, it's amazing. And I, I already talked about it the last show, but I don't care. It's it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. And if you didn't, yeah, you, you 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 may have you may have single handedly sold me on getting a switch just to get this game. <laughs> and I haven't I haven't seen more than a couple of like you know screenshots and like some like you know little trailer video stuff and you just raving about it. But like just hearing you keep talking about it, I keep going like. I could cash out some crypto for a switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and what's great is like it's only three hundred bucks for the switch, for a console, I have a brand new console that only came out, you know, last year, three hundred bucks. That's, that's a pretty good deal, and you can take it with you. That that is convenient. Yeah, yeah. I'm still I'm still rocking my PS3. That's the last console <laughs> I got. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to like games like that. You know, where I'm pl- a lot of those games are like first person shooters or really kind of graphics heavy games that come for come on those systems, Xbox, PlayStation. Yeah, you I just might as well just get a PC. <laughs> you already got a PC to play these games. So, it's like, yeah, I just I don't know. I just I just like the play the play the PlayStation library. But I have I mean, in the past, I have purchased another system just for a game. And it was like I think it was the yeah, I bought the GameCube for uh i think it was at the, I, I think at the time it was resident evil might have been four or maybe six and whatever it was at the time they were only putting it out for the gamecube <laughs> and i so had to have that game just because i saw like you know watching the demo videos of it was like this is insane i have to have this like i actually did so i it's you know th- there is a precedent there for me to do this i mean despite how poor i am right now <laughs> yeah other other than my alleged crypto holdings um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I got a brand new book, and I've, I, I bought it, and I was like, I'm gonna read this thing, because what I've read so far was so great, and it's just been like, as soon as I'm home, I'm like, do I want to really want to read that? No, a Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I'm just gonna play this, and I've been reading it, which is funny, because I bought the book for like ten bucks. I bought the book, and then I ended up just listening to the audio book, which is a terrible, one of the worst audio books I've ever listened to ever. Uh, but was it on LibriVox? No. Home, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the LibriVox version, LibriVox version of uh, The Eagle and Its Own is far superior to the audio book wow, version. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty bad. But it had a lot of promise <laughs> at first because the guy – so I'm talking about the Satanic Bible uh, by Antor, Anton Sanzor LaVey. And the audiobook version that I'm listening to is on YouTube. And it's, it's read by this guy. I forget his name. It's Tyler something. And when he, when he starts reading it, he has like kind of a southern accent, but it's really deep. So it sounds like 
it almost sounds it sounds satanic the way the guy's reading it. He's like the satanic Bible. That's that's how he talks, and it's like, oh, I can, uh-huh. I can get into this, but then he starts. But the audio quality isn't up to par, and it's like okay, but it changes. So like one one will sound okay, the other one sounds like he's in the other room. Uh, it sounds like he's in the other side of a really large room with a lot of echo, and then like every time that he burps, <laughs> <laughs> he burps like he. But it's like Rick and Morty, like it's like Rick from Rick and Morty, where he's burping in the middle, like as a word, and it's like oh god, come on, man. It's just, it's just, it's terrible, but it gets the job done. And I ended up finishing the book that way, but it's like, I don't want to pick up the book because if I have the book, I might as well just have the switch in my hand because it's roughly the same size. (laughs) 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 And I could just lay down, like, that's how I normally do is I'll just lay down and read. But I'm like, if I'm laying down, I could play the switch (laughs) in my bed. I'm just going to do that. And then the battery runs out. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play on my TV now. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mess, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, changing subjects seamlessly. This the Satanic Bible. I've been really all about this thing. This I think this this really kind of patched up a lot of the problems that I had with egoism, and definitely mm-hmm. a lot of the problems that I had with Ragnar Redbeards, um, because he basically took out all the anti semitism, uh, you know, racism, white supremacy. Uh, cl- ver- uh, overtly misogynistic things, not like some of the <laughs> some of the things like feminists would call misogynist. Like, no, this is very overt uh, misogyny that you know. In Ragnar Redbeard's might is right mm-hmm. takes away all the stuff that I that I didn't like about those books, and um, it had some things in that I wouldn't expect that I liked, but I did like, and that was the all the the ritualistic stuff, and he had a, a really good explanation for it. So basically, it's it spooks knowing that it spooks. He, um, Anton had this opinion, and I think I agree with it overall, is like humans are inherently spooked. He's not using this term, even though you can tell there's a lot of Max Turner influence in it. Um, that people like spooks and people need spooks. So why not have spooks knowing full well that they're spooks, that they're just, you know, just they're just rituals and traditions that people like and people need rituals and traditions. So why not give them rituals and traditions knowing that it's nothing more than rituals and traditions? Like that's it. You know, there's no spooky stuff behind it and all the spooky stuff that is behind it. It's just, he, he's a very upfront, like the stuff, you know, doesn't actually work, but your mind wants it to work. And that's how you, that's the reason why it does work is because you're making it real. So that's all what that black mass stuff is <laughs> and all of the satanic rituals and stuff are. They're just basically something to do to kind of give you traditions and rituals and, you know, and putting aside skepticism, which he's really a big, clearly an advocate for science and skepticism of even a, a, of the occult and everything. And he, he says, like, but this is the moment where you're, you know, you want to do this all the time, but you need a break from that. And this is your break from that. And I'm like, this is really awesome. I'm really taking it. <laughs> and I'd never thought I'd live the day where I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Satanist. I'm really, I'm really digging this stuff. And um, <laughs> I sent this to you and I was, <laughs> after we did the show with James Weeks and I was like, you should show this to Dave because he, he'll, he's going to get so triggered to hear that I'm <laughs> involved in Satanism now because he's been on like this Christian kick, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's, he's not like, cause he's not a Christian as no. far as I know. I don't know what, like, I think he's just trolling with that. Um, but I, I'm sure there was, there was a lot in there that probably would trigger the hell out of him. <laughs> yeah. If he actually, you know, got around to listening to it. I don't, I don't even remember if I bothered at sending it to him cause I know he, <laughs> he would have just saw the title and just been like, um, just give me some, you know bullshit response i guess um or some call you a commie in some way shape or form <laughs> <laughs> and and move on with his day you know? yeah that's how dave handles that yeah yeah everything i don't I'm, like is communism kind of yeah that's kind of how it works <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know enough about Satanism. Other, again, I've, I mean, I've heard you talk about it lately, and uh, 
It seems interesting. Although my 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 fir- my first question with that whole idea of you know, I don't dis I don't necessarily gr- disagree. I I mean I haven't given it enough thought. I I guess, but on its on its face, I would say I don't necessarily disagree that people you know humans are inherently spooked to to a certain degree. Um, and you know, the tradition, you know, doing the traditions for the sake of traditions, that makes sense. But my first, my first thought is, well, if everybody knows that they're just doing them for the sake of doing the traditions, wouldn't enough people become apathetic to them like relatively quickly? <laughs> I don't know. They seem kind of, they seem kind of fun, you know? There's a lot yeah, of- I, I, yeah, I, I guess. Especially when so you have that- a naked woman on an altar. Okay, that yeah, that'll yeah. definitely keep. Them. <laughs> All right, that'll keep my attention for a couple of years at yeah, least, that, off the bat. So yeah, that one's one of the more optional things. All right, see, like I said, I don't, I don't know enough. There you go. Yeah, the more you know, right? <laughs> but and, and it's and it's there for, for. I'm sold. Yeah, for pretty awesome reasons. It's like, what? Because everything that's in there, he'll, he'll say like, "This is what this is for." Like, this is what this is. This is, uh, you know, in part of the ritual. This part is either necessary or requirement. And this is why. And um, so I'll say like, you know, like you want to have black robes or black clothing. Uh, if you don't have robes, you can just wear regular clothing that's black and everything has to be black. And the reason is because you're trying to summon the dark, dark forces. Uh, this is why, you know, this is why you need a phallus, but this is optional. You don't need the phallus unless it's, it's a bigger ceremony. And this is why. And, you know, that it's supposed to be having to do with, you know, the life forces and because phallus is about procreation and everything. And then it'll be like na- a naked woman on the altar. It's optional, but it's necessary, but it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, therefore arousing the men inside, of the <laughs> inside of the ritual. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> at least they're being honest. <laughs> like there's nothing, nothing spooky about that. It's just like, oh yeah, it's just there to arouse the men, you know, cool. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm taking applications. Uh, <laughs> if you're in the Vegas area and wish to get naked on a table, uh, I'm, your, I'm your dude. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's really kind of like one small aspect of it. The rest of it's very much like, you know, here's here's how you can help. Here's some tools to help you in your daily life. You know, um, this is the... the, the, the uh, the whole thing about Satan is really about not really so much atheism, but atheism. Like Satan is supposed to represent you, you as a person, you know, it's very egoistic. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you're saying like, hail Satan, what you're really saying is hail you, that you are the most important person in your life. uh, And you should be very focused in on yourself and greed and selfishness are very kind of key aspects of it. You can tell he's getting a lot from Rand too. And uh, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It, it's, you know, there's no God or devil in in this religion at all. It's all kind of metaphorical. Um, Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, he says that it's atheist, but, you know, it seems like it's very atheist. I think that's a better description of it. So, yeah, hail mm. Satan. <laughs> 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 you know, and you know what, like, I, I had friends that read this book. And when I started first bringing it up to some of the people that I know online, they were kind of like, oh, this is all like 13 year old edgy shit. And I was like, yeah, it seems like it. But every like from what I'm hearing from this podcast that I've been listening to, which is um, uh, what is it called again? <laughs> the Devil, You Know uh, podcast, which is a really interesting podcast. It's really good. Um, it was like, this is sounds like Rand and egoism and Ragnar Redbeard, which is what other people have been saying as well. And in, even in the introduction, they they cite Rand and R- Ragnar Redbeard as, as uh, influences. And I was like, okay, maybe I should stop, you know, painting this with the with the brush that rightly so may just be deserved. <laughs> you know, it was a bunch of <laughs> you know, middle school edgy shit uh, and see if there's anything good in it. And I really do like it, you know. Hmm. And a lot of the, a lot of the satanic stuff in it is really just there to just to troll the shit <laughs> out of the the uber religious types, which uh, which is always fun. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I, so so far I haven't heard anything that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. So i i could I could see why you would uh, find this uh, interesting. Yeah, 
there's just something there about just being around Christians <laughs> at my work, you know, and I, I was, I was mentioning this to one of my coworkers. He's religious, but he seems to be kind of like, he just likes to troll me as well. Cause he knows that I'm an atheist and he used to be like, and every time I'd, I'd mess with him or cause we would do things to each other at work to fuck with them, fuck with each other. Like I'd bump my card into his and I'd be like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. And he'd be like, Oh, you know, God's watching you, Jim. <laughs> just to fuck with me. <laughs> And so I was like telling him about it. And some of the other coworkers who were Filipino, ergo, very Christian, <laughs> were like kind of like, like, oh, you're really a Satanist? I'm like, yeah, hail Satan. <laughs> Just kind of give it kind of gets them to go like, ah. But they, you know, they still like me. They still know me and they still they understand where I'm where I'm coming from, but it's still kind of like it's like, ah, sure. Jim. <laughs> what are you doing? That's well, fun. <laughs> I, well, I, I can imagine. But do do most people even? I mean, because again, I I'm 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 not very knowledgeable about it to begin with. But do most people even know what it is? Because at least in my experiences, whenever that whenever that terminology is brought up, the most of the people I've ever been around, or at least or probably almost all the people I've ever been around, react as if the person they're talking about is like the caricature of, of like the devil worshiping yeah. satanists so like do people like if pe most people hear that term is that what they're picturing at first if you don't describe it to yeah. them it's like do you encounter that a lot is mm -hmm. that what you, what you encounter? okay i just yeah. i want to make sure this is <laughs> and i i think it's funny <laughs> i think it's of funny course i would have thought that too if you rewinded the clock but earlier this year and asked me like do satan satanists does Anton LaVey worship the devil? I would have said, oh, uh, clearly, yeah, <laughs> but he doesn't. And the book really kind of expresses, like, if anybody worships Satan, they're not a Satanist. Like, they're a pseudo-Satanist uh, or pseudo is usually the kind of mm. term. Or And uh, uh, you know, the, the people on the podcast I listened to, they were they would call them, like, goths, goths gone wild. <laughs> <This book. laughs> He's like, yeah, those are just fakes. Just don't pay any attention to them. Uh, if they say they're a Satanist, tell, remind them that they're not because Satanism has never been any kind of – there's never been any books about Satanism as a, as a legitimate kind of philosophy until Anton came around. Then it started kind of taking its own form. I mean, sure, there was like, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, it's just, it's just names escape me. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I need more caffeine. Um, That's got to be a God damn it. The most, I, the, the I, most dangerous person in uh, ever. What was his name? I have no idea. Oh, you're going to kick yourself, and I'm going to kick myself once Probably. it clicks. God damn it. Ah. <sighs> I, didn't thought, I thought I had my shit together today, <laughs> but here I am <laughs> Googling shit. Uh, Jesus, it, it, it starts with an A. Alistair Crowley. I didn't, didn't, oh, didn't, yes. Didn't even look at the results yet. Uh, it's not the <laughs> results. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but he never really would, would say that it was Satanism. He He kind of just mentioned things like would refer to stuff in terms of like Lucifer and Satan, but I don't think he would have ended up saying that he was, <sighs> but yeah, but there was never really any kind of codified, like this is what Satanism is until, uh, 1966. So, yeah. Hmm. And there's nothing about there and about devil worship. And every time they talk about the black, when they talks about the black mass in the, uh, in one of the, in the book, he says, like, if you think of in terms of like, if there's a there's a candle made of ba uh, you know baby fat and uh, there's a human sacrifice involved, he's like, well, you know, their their propaganda machine has worked well because <laughs> none of that's true. Um, you know, even before. Yeah, seriously, we use goats, man. Come yeah. on, get with the program. There's no animal sacrifices. Being <laughs> killed. It's all kind of everything is pretty much a parody of Catholic mass when it comes to the black mass. It's just a parody. Um, but you're doing it to kind of give yourself some traditions. And, and I love this, the, the most important holiday in all of Satanism is your own birthday. 
And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> I love all this. Now see that 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 would cause conflict for me. Yeah. <laughs> as as I as I as I am very anti birthday and have been for really? years. <laughs> including my own birthday. Yeah, we've never talked about this. No. Yeah, I, yeah, I have Tell I, me I, why. I'm like, I don't really remember why this started. But at a certain point, I, I mean, for a long time, birthdays to me were like the were one of the only days I got off of ended up getting off of work a year because I usually ended up, you know, for a long time I was working different jobs like convenience store jobs and other other jobs that would be open on the holidays. And uh, I either got drafted to work because of my wherever I, I was either low man on the totem pole, or if I was making de- you know good you know good money and I was going to make even better for working the holidays, I would usually opt to take it just because I was like, I screw it, I'll make the money, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but my birthday, I, I usually kind of just took off for and then at a certain point i was you know when i started running my business i guess it was around then i really couldn't do that anymore i had to work Mm -hmm. uh regardless if i wanted to and i just stopped caring about it as much and i also just wanted people like i wanted people to i got to this point where i just thought people spending money on me for you know for this day was like kind of silly and i kind of encouraged people to stop doing so and it just like spiraled from there to this point to the point where i I got like deep down into it where like i i had this philosophy built up where it was like no man this is ridiculous You, you it's like it's basically imparting communism on kids um, because you're teaching them at a very young age to expect something for nothing just because, you know, just because they were born, essentially. I'm like, I'm like, how communistic is that? That's insane. I'm like, that's just ridiculous. If anybody should get a present, it should be your mom because, you know, she's the one who went through all the work on that damn day. <laughs> Um, which I've actually started a movement with that. I know, I know a couple of people have messaged me and told me they have actually started purchasing their mother things on their birthday now. <laughs> Which is great. I, you know, I was half kidding about that because I don't do that. My my mom and I don't speak at the moment, um, so I'm definitely not buying her any birthday presents mm. um, for her for her birthday or for mine. But yeah, I'm just like kind of like I I kind of think it's a stupid thing, and you know, when I my kids were first born, I didn't want them. Not that I didn't want them to get things, and I didn't want people to buy them things. And I didn't want to get. I didn't. I was trying to get out of buying them things. Um, I wish. I really wanted to teach them from a very young age that, like you know, stuff like that. Like, and all those holidays are pretty much meaningless because you know, basically teach them what you, what you're talking about with the Satanism stuff. That that yeah, it's all spooky. Listen, like point it all out to them right away. Like this is all spooky crap. You know, we don't need it. If you want it, great, we can do it. But we don't really need it, type of thing. And basically just show them that. I would show my appreciation and love for them if that was, you know, by, you know, like how they, how their friends and cousins or whatever would get things on, on their birthday and Christmas and whatever else. I'm like, you'll just get stuff randomly for me for no reason. That's kind of how I want to operate. And that's how I always have with them. I mean, unfortunately, I've had to get them stuff on their birthdays and Christmas because, you know, I got outvoted by their mom and everybody else <laughs> in my family and their family. I'm like, I, to this day, like that happens so many times. And I've said this before. I, 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 I still don't understand how anybody else got a vote. Um, I was pretty sure it was going to be one to one. I don't know how I ended up losing, but I did. So, uh, although um, their mom has since um, apologized to me for that, and she regrets doing that because <laughs> one of our girls, one of our girls, unfortunately, did turn into that child who just like you know when you ask her what do you, what's 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 Christmas about, what's your birthday about, presents, 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 presents. It's just like, uh, oh fuck. <laughs> well, see, so this this is where I'll, I'll take some issue with you. I don't think it's communistic because. Sure, on your birthday, you get all kinds of cool stuff from other people, and you get, 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 me, me, me. Uh, but that's not very communist. It, me, me, me is very not commie. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, free, actually, free stuff is. But that also only comes with, uh, with reciprocation from when it's their birthday. Now you got to buy them something. So sure, if you're looking at it from just in terms of your own birthday, yeah, you get free stuff. But then when it's someone else's birthday, it's like, oh, I gotta buy you something now because you yeah. something for me. I, I, yeah, which <laughs> which makes it even which makes it even worse because then it's just a vicious cycle. Yeah, and uh, you know there was I can't remember it was either a comedy skit or some sitcom from years ago that they did that that I, I'm reminded of. Um, where the guy was just, that's what he's basically saying. Like, yeah, like, cause you just like, basically you just hand each other money back and forth on that day, essentially, you know, cause half the time you may not want the crap the person gets you. 
<laughs> but for, for me, when I buy gifts, like I usually don't think in terms of monetary value, you know, like, cause I know that the person who bought me the switch, you know, th- that's like 300 bucks plus maybe the $50, you know, game that came with it or $60 game that came with it. Like, sure, that was pretty expensive, but what I got him was just as valuable to him that it was as the switch was to me. Because I remember it was my dad. <laughs> my dad bought it for me it, it, out of nowhere. I was just like, I just got an email uh, from from Walmart saying, "Hey, you got a package coming?" And I was like, "I do." I was like, "Oh God, did I get?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when when I, when I got it, I was like, "Oh my God!" Did um, I dr- have I been drunk ordering again? <laughs> I, I posted, I was like, someone bought this for me. I don't know who, like whoever did, thank you. Uh, and then like uh, uh, one, of, one of my friends uh, was like, you sure didn't buy it for yourself when you were drunk? And I was like, uh, let me check. I don't think I would have bought from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, great. Then I did some tracking around and then it was like, I was like, okay, the only person who I who would buy something for from Walmart had to be my dad. So I contacted him. I was like, was that you? And he was like, ah, yeah, you weren't supposed to know. <laughs> and he was like, okay, um, thank you. <laughs> but uh, but I got I got him uh, Batman sixty six. The the there was like a a new movie that was made like or two movies that was made. And I didn't know the second one existed. I know the first one existed, and so I got him that. Yeah, one. I heard, I heard Brian t- t- Slaver talking about that. Yeah, a while back. I heard him. I heard him, but I wasn't really paying attention. I just was like, oh, I, I know that it exists, and I, I pulled it up and got it. But my dad was a huge fan of Batman sixty six. Huge, huge fan of it. And I was like, I'm my kids g- are as well. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, they love it. That's yeah. actually that, that's actually their favorite thing. One of their favorite uh, super, like they're big into superhero stuff and everything. But they, that was one of their first things they fell in love with. Was uh, I don't even remember why I showed it to them. I just like on a whim I showed them one of the episodes because it was I think it must have been on Prime or Netflix at the time, mm-hmm. and I was able to watch like one or two episodes for free. So I was like, I threw it on, and they were like mesmerized <laughs> to the point where I ended up I like I ended up buying like a season on Amazon or whatever wherever it was. I bought the season on there, like Amazon or Netflix. I mean, yeah, it must have been Amazon then. So I bought a season for them. And then like a week later, I saw like, or like part of the season, I guess. And like a week later, I saw like, I think the first two seasons at Target for like 15 bucks. And I was like, all right, kids, here you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember dad, dad, he was talking about those random things I buy you. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and it's they watched great. it obsessively for like, weeks, I used to watch that religiously months. when I was a kid and me and my dad were, it was a thing. Like we would always watch it together. And so me getting that to him really kind of brought everything. Of back course. To him. And he fucking, he fell in love with it. He was like, he was like, at first he was like, why did he get me a Batman cartoon? And then he looked at it and he was like, Oh, Adam West and Burt Ward are on this. And Julie Newmar too. Oh my God, they're actually doing the voices for this. And he was, he watched it and he was like, he was like, this was so amazing. It was like watching like a really long, you know, version of this. Where it's also making fun of itself for being so corny. He was like, it was perfect. He was like, this is the, probably the best Christmas gift I got. He's like, yeah. You know, that's what I that's what I look for when in terms of it. it's not. The oh, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. all about I'm, like that. You're really thinking about the person that you're buying a gift for. That's that's what it comes first, you know. So I, of course, no, I know. I just I've been I've been anti all these things for a while. It's just my you know just my personal stance. I don't hold yeah. it against anybody else who <laughs> wants to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I I see the spooks for what they are and choose not to, choose not to spook myself with them. Essentially. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, that's what I'm gonna say. Like spooks, spooks can be good. You yeah, know? no. Again, I'm, I'm not. I, I agree I, I, with everything else. I do agree with it. Just, you know, I, I on, on, on principle. You know, on, on general principle, I do agree with all that. You know, I'm, I'm not opposed to them because I have my own. You know, <laughs> as long as your spooks are nice, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And naked ladies and birthdays on the. Uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all there. Sign me up. So, yeah. So, um, you know what? We, I haven't talked a lot about this in a long, long time. And, and it's interesting because I was kind of one of the first people to start talking about this. And now it's like everybody talks about this. I don't know if I had anything to do with it, but it's like a, a thing now. It's like it's, it's, uh, it's, a for, it's, 
it's a well-established uh, pejorative to you to call people a tribalist now. And I don't know if I had anything to do with it. If I did, cool. If not, whatever. I'm just happy that it's <laughs> that it's now a pejorative <laughs> to call people a tribalist. So, so I was watching this. I don't. Have you ever been watching the the Miles Power stuff on YouTube? Miles. No. Miles. Is it Miles or Mile? Mile Power. I don't know. No, no. It's Miles Power. You, but he gets mad if you say powers. So Miles Power. Uh, he's a guy on YouTube. He does a lot of stuff about like GMOs and skepticism, and he did like a whole series about you know nine eleven truthers. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch anything on YouTube. <laughs> okay, he also has a podcast called The League of Nerds, and he also do- talks about a lot of the same stuff, a lot of skepticism and stuff. But he had this guy on from Monsanto, and I'll remember to post a link in the the show notes. Um, and he was ta- they ended up talking about like how people like kind of think in terms of ideas um, and how to kind of like get around that, not really get around it, but just kind of deal with that. Because what he was saying was like people think in terms of like tribes, their ideas come in a collection. Right. And when they discover a new idea, they usually try to run it past their tribe first. You know, so libertarians will, will hear about this idea and then they'll pass it off to other libertarians and then libertarians will be like, oh, that's a terrible idea. This is absolutely horrible. And then they go like, okay, then I know that that's, that's horrible because that's what my tribe says. <laughs> and this is not just libertarians to everybody. Um, I mean, literally everybody does this, including myself, and it's not good. <laughs> but, you know, I, I try to avoid it. And then when someone comes along with that, with that idea who, who is in the positive or vice versa, um, you know, and they'll, they'll say like, oh, this is like, you know, like you're wrong about this idea. People take it as an attack, not just like as an attack on the idea, but uh, as a as a person and as 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 also as an attack on their tribe as well. And I thought that was a really kind of interesting perspective. And you, if you have to try to get people to try to divorce them and their tribe from the idea, you know, that's, that's being attacked. Hmm. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I, I drifted off for a minute. Uh, <laughs> where, where were we? Tribalism. <laughs> I heard some some lighters going on in the background. Did you do too much of that? <laughs> no. I did that, and then I put that down, and then I picked up my phone and started and 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 started reading a chat that I shouldn't have for a minute, and got got engrossed in, a, in another project I'm supposed to be working on. So recap, yes, so pe- people identify with the ideas that they've come to, and they usually check those yeah, ideas yeah. by by their tribe. And yes. so when you when 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 I come along, right, and I say that I am not the biggest fan of the economic calculation problem in terms of. Okay, so I'm not a big. Oh, I am a fan of it because I do think that it shows the problem with with uh, with socialism. It just shows that it makes it very, uh, ver- makes it makes it unworkable. But I don't think that it makes it impossible, and that's my disagreement with it. So when I come along and I say, the economic calculation problem doesn't show that socialism is impossible. It just shows that it's very uh, it's very wonky and makes it not work and nearly in. Uh, not nearly impossible. That's not the right word. Because I just said it wasn't impossible. <laughs> but it just makes it near impossible. How about that? It makes it near impossible. It doesn't make it impossible. Because the Soviet Union and all these other countries have worked fine with the economic calculation problem. But it just sucks. And people die. And there's shortages and, and all that stuff. Um, and so when I come along and say that, like, yeah, I have problems with the economic calculation problem. And people have like wrapped their identities around like, oh, well, but I'm an Austrian and I like Mises. And how dare you criticize them because you're attacking me. And not only are you attacking me, but you're also attacking everybody that I like, <laughs> you know, like as as people and not the idea that they're taking. And so I was kind of just trying to think about like how, how to kind of start talking in terms of like criticizing certain ideas without making people feel like they are attacked. I I. I don't know how you do that because <laughs> you, you're not really. Do you like start the, it out by saying, okay, I like you. You're a really cool guy. But this idea is wrong. I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> I, I don't know if it'll work, but it may, you may need creepy. to go to. 
<laughs> it, it does, but you may, but but that's. I mean, if you're talking about these, these people, I mean, I I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I know it. I know the people you're talking about. Um, well, people in general, how if they are wedded that, that wedded to their ideas, um, they 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 do take it personally. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I don't I don't know how you go about talking about it any differently because the the whole re- the the whole reason you're in that position is because they you know. They've already lost sight. Of, they've already lost yeah. sight of having any conversation uh, about a, um, I guess, a dissenting view, um, or not. Maybe not. Um, you know, just an oppo- opposing. There you go, an opposing view. Uh, you know, they've because uh, you know, obviously, they have trigger words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, how many times have this happened to you? Because I know you're a critic of the NAP. But how many times have this happened to you? Where you're just saying like, yeah, here's a, I have some problems with the NAP, and they immediately go. You just want you just say that to like because you want to you want to like use violence to achieve your goals and then get blocked. Yeah, luckily that hasn't happened to me in a very long time. But yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I because I just I don't engage anymore. But yeah, I have. I have had that happen. It's funny. I I I was on the other side of that fence for like a split second. Uh, <laughs> I, although I, I was never I was never a blocker that was never my style yeah. um, but I, 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 I you know for for a moment a couple of years back I was on the other side of that fence where I was very defensive about the nap and uh, yeah and then I and then, and then and then I realized that that was silly <laughs> yeah and that that was just as spooky as any you know as anything else yeah so, so. yeah I have a lot of people in other quote unquote tribes um and it's kind of interesting to kind of talk to people who you vehemently disagree with, like not just like, oh, I'm, I disagree with you and everything's going to be completely confrontational the entire time. Like um, like uh, one of the, one of my patrons is actually, was uh, a former Marxist and I've actually I did a podcast with him. Um, Unspooked the right, which I don't know if there's going to be another episode of that <laughs> now that I'm kind of <laughs> straying from Sterner a bit. But um I don't know, maybe, because I still find it, his contribution kind of very valuable. Um, and, uh, you know, like when, when we when I first started talking to him, like this guy was a hardcore Marxist, hardcore Marxist. And every time that I've ever had and like was talking to someone, it was never kind of like, oh, yeah, like this is all stupid, whatever. It, w- it was just like, oh, so explain to me how this works. And like, OK. And then and then it, when I had criticism of it, it wasn't like, well, that's wrong because of this. I was just like, is it, what about this? Like, is how does that work in, in, in terms of whatever? And it was always mm-hmm. kind of like, well, this is how I would explain. And then it kind of got to the point where like. I didn't shift to, towards his view and he didn't shift more towards my view, but we kind of moved past both of our positions and now we're in different, different places now, <laughs> some overlap, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of interesting uh, to kind of talk to people like that because it really kind of not only challenges you, but it challenges them. But if I was just to talk to some random ANCOM, like the ANCOM versus an, ANCOM or was ANCAP versus ANCOM debate group, are you in this group? No, I left that. They, I left that cancerous hellhole years, like yeah. a year plus ago. I just, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's just talking over each other the whole time because <laughs> everybody's working off completely different different definitions of everything. Well, Except yeah, that's and that's why I don't. Th- I don't think it's. I don't think it's really possible to have the most of the conversations you're talking about with anybody that you don't already well i mean not okay it's not impossible but it's 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 a lot more impossible yeah <laughs> or a lot more difficult um unless you already have some kind of work you know some kind of relationship um or you know or even even a you know even a an early one i guess but like some kind of where you can already communicate about something else besides that, besides this, you know, you have to have something, you know, some kind of bond in some other area where you're not going to immediately just start screaming, um, either <laughs> insults or, uh, or, or, um, or, or axioms, which, you, or which I kind of repeat myself there, um, at that point, um, <laughs> because that's really what they are. People just hurling their shit back and forth at each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, unless, unless you already have that, you know, cause I, I've had, I mean, it, again, it's not impossible. I, I've made inroads with people that I've barely, you know, barely known 
depending on the topic, you know, that's usually what it is yeah. and, uh, and how you're able to reach them. But, but you, yeah, most of the time, even, th even then I've still, I've run into that too, where you say, you say a certain thing, a phrase that triggers them <laughs> and they just, they, they automatically think that you, they know what you're going to say. So they, they go on the defensive and they start spew, you know, like you're yeah. talking about, they just start, you know, Almost, almost like a you know a telemarketer with their little list of in front of them, just rattling off responses like left and right. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. difficult. I mean, I, I, I that's like I said, I, I don't engage on social media a lot, and and because I'm still, I mean, people aren't like you know threatening to burn my house down anymore, but I'm still not exactly <laughs> well liked in the area. Yeah, I don't think so, I don't think anything would have helped with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I I'm not I'm not out having a lot of conversations about things with anybody other than the small group of clientele that I still have. Um, and uh, so. yeah, and uh, and and Jen, because uh, <laughs> I don't talk to my family, and uh, other other than my dad, <laughs> and I don't I don't talk to hers, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so I, I I don't really I don't really bother engaging anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting till I finally move out of here, and then I'm gonna start anew, and I'll I'll have to figure all this stuff out and how to be able to, you know, broach things because I'm sure I'm I'm sure wherever I end up, it's not gonna be a, like an anarchist or libertarian haven. <laughs> Are there any except for maybe parts of New Hampshire? Well, the, the, there, there are. I mean, there's a, there's a huge, well, huge, relatively speaking, <laughs> population in like you know, Michigan's got a really nice sized population of anarchists that have all started a group together, you know, in some fashion. Um, you know, there's a couple other places around where there's decent sized populations where people are close, but yeah, overall, no, there's not a lot. Um, Does James count? Cause he, uh, he's a tanky. I don't know. I don't know what he is. Um, I, 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 I always count him, though. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Uh, I, I tease him only because uh, he was getting teased by another podcast co-host that he, uh, he used to be on. <laughs> oh, yes. No, James is not a tanky, but... Sometimes he'll say things. I'm just like, are you serious? Rent is not theft, dude. <laughs> and then you'll try to argue with him, and he's like, oh, pff, those, them's all spooks anyway. <laughs> what a cop out. <laughs> yeah. That does seem to be his fallback position. Yep. How dare you? <laughs> I, I usually only ever go there and, and, and jest for the most part because, I, I, you know, I never – yeah, I, I've, I've, I've. Well, I listened to the book and I've read most of it and now. Um, although, what I, I haven't touched it ever. You're since talking I found about out the ego in its own, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Not to yeah, don't not bury to bury, the lead. Not to bury my. Not to bury my own lead, but I was because I haven't. T I haven't touched it since I found out how much they're currently worth. <laughs> I told you all about this. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah. Like, like mine's, <laughs> Don't be bearing mine's the still, lead on my show, okay? <laughs> mine's uh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. you don't vape no more. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> the person I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. I was going to say what I vape. No, he don't. He don't. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, I never took, you know, I still, I still haven't, I, I'm not an egoist by any means. <laughs> I, I just, I use it to piss people off most of the time. <laughs> I guess I, I'm essentially trolling, especially when I do. I, I mean, like, I, I like a lot of the ideas, but I'm not like a full blown egoist or anything. Um, I'm not like I'm not the far as far down the path as James is. Um, I, I'm, st I'm I, I still don't actually have any set. <laughs> I'm still drifting, man. Um, I've I've been through, you know. I'm basically I'm like I said. I'm sure if I I'm sure if I if I started reading the. Um, what you call what you're reading currently? <laughs> I'd pick up, I'd pick up even more ideas and go, ooh, okay. And I, I'd, I'd probably just take some of it and go, okay, I can deal with this. Um, I'm kind of like create, 
create. I, I kind of like. I, I'm kind of like in the in the train in the thought of like just creating my own philosophy essentially, and just taking every you know what I learn from wherever I stumble across and take the good shit from it and just keep moving on, type of thing. Did you say that you were going to Ohio or Indiana once you get out of New York, Stan? Um, now, now it's probably going to be Indiana. Okay. I was going to say, cause if you ended up going to Ohio, I know there's like a hotbed of Satanism <laughs> and I think awesome. it's like kind of like the Cleveland area ish sort of, but I know that you were going to be more rural cause you're going to be a farmer. Yeah. I okay. was going to be in the, in the South section most likely. But, yeah. I was going to say, cause you know, you could take a little trip up for black mass, you know, <laughs> if, if, if only to see a naked, naked woman and <laughs> Yeah, just just for that, it might be worth it. I mean, because again, again, it's like you know, like I said, when I was listening to you describe it before, I yeah, I was I was I was liking everything I was hearing, especially especially when you got to that part, and not just because of the naked woman, because you were describing, you know, how it's like basically a parody of the Catholic Mass, and I'm like, I'm like I'm in because you know I had to suffer through the Catholic Mass for years as I was forced to go to church, um, you know, from a very young age until. I guess what was it, fifteen when I find, when I got my confirmation and my mom told me finally told me I had the choice of whether to, you know, keep going to church or not after that. Convinced that yeah, uh all, I would do Naked Woman, Sham Ham Farash, Hail Satan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> and I don't have to put dollar in her G string. I'm there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Bonus, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. It, you you think you would, but I can't really find too much about Satanists <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, you think you would, but I, th- I found like a Facebook group, and there's no one running it. And it's just okay, and there, and a bunch of people <laughs> are like, "Wait, is 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 there something here?" Or like you see a, like a couple of people saying, "Is there something here?" But yeah, it's um, it's about it. But what are your problems with egoism? Um, I don't know. I mean, I still, I mean, I still struggle with the, the whole, whole, you know, we're going back to, we're talking about like my problems with the nap and everything, (laughs) you know, I went for, I went from being a pretty hardcore, I was never really an objectivist. I was definitely a napper though. Like I was very, you know, more in the, you were a nappy headed Lulbert. Yeah, more 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 like the 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 UPB camp, I guess, for for a little too long. Yeah, um, and that whole, I was that in whole the UPB idea. for like three days or something like that. <laughs> and then I was like, and I was like, okay, let's find criticism because I'm one of those people. Like, I'll get interested in something, and then I'll immediately try to find people who disagree with it and see what they say. And then I was like, oh, pff, oh no, forget all that. That was interesting for like the five days. Sorry, go ahead. You were yeah. Familiar. I, I, I try to do that now. I didn't do that back then, so I stayed there for a little too, too long, and I was very, you know, very rigid about the uh, whole objective morality thing. Um, and then I, I I've since spooks, drifted. Nerd. Exactly. So I've I've since drifted away from there. But I mean, honestly, I I think I just I haven't had. I've had the time. I was gonna say I haven't had enough time. I haven't had the time, but I've had time. I just, I haven't had the the energy or the desire to actually study anything seriously lately, just with everything that's going on. So I've only kind of re- like I read, um, you know, outside of listening to the audio book, you know, as painful as that was, the LibriVox ver- version of uh, the ego in its own, um, <laughs> listening to that, and then starting to read starting to read that translation at one point because i knew i was gonna even before i i heard james say it at one point i think it might have been on 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 a podcast with you or it might have been a show i did with him on the fiends at one point um i just remember him saying yeah you definitely have to you have to read it once and then you have to read it again and then you probably have to read it at least one more time (laughs) and then you'll finally like and like I, I, I was prepared for that. And like once I started reading it, I got it. I was like, okay, now I totally understand why I'm going to need to read this yeah. again to really grasp. That was um, that was that was the Lulberts. It was me and him. I was like, I yeah, I keep. I'll read a chapter and then I'm like, I don't, I didn't get that. Let me read it again. He was like, no, no, stop doing that. Just, just, just read it. And then if you have problems, read it through again. And I was like, I can do this because it's it's a it's a it's an interesting read. It's not it's not exactly an easy read. Considering the the translations, no. b- all of them <laughs> are 
are really kind of hard to to deal with because because Germans have a the the way the German language is where it's the, they'll say words that they, that people make up on the spot like every like there's everybody coins words all the time in German and it's just basically a mash of like eight different words into one word mm-hmm. and because of that the the way the way some of the sentences run in English are basically like run on sentences but you need them <laughs> because of the way the German word was you know the way the German is I don't know it's weird. So I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I read it and then I listened to the audio book a couple of times. So I was like, okay, I get it. I have a lot of disagreements now, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So the one thing that I had a problem with with egoism is contracts. <laughs> sure. Like he's right that, you know, contracts are basically a, a duty that you're putting upon yourself and duties are a spook and all that stuff. Um, but if without contracts, without without something binding people to an agreement, you're not going to be able to get multi-stage productions of things, which means most technologies that you would see gone. You, you wouldn't have cell phones. You wouldn't have, you know, desktop computers, laptop computers, tablets, all, all the stuff that we take for granted. You would not have this because you need to have people working with a bunch of different people who have expertise in far different things. And if people left their own devices or just kind of loose agreements, very loose agreements, where just working as like a union of egoists, like things would just never get done for that kind of sophistication and and, uh, and cooperation, cooperative economics. You just can't do it. It would just be completely impossible. And nothing would ever get done. So, well, in theory, like I like I like the idea that you know all these agreements are just spooks and. And, you know, there's there's problems that can come from it. I'll I'll take that. (laughs) I'll take the problems (laughs) just to have a somewhat uh, an advanced civilization. That's that's the problem that I have with uh, egoism. Mostly is contracts. Well, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I I, I think I think I I think I I think I ended up having or or, or would have ended up having a problem once I finally got through it enough times. (laughs) And grasped all of it. Although, again, when I started reading the new translation, um, and trying to trying to keep in mind at least what uh, what what's his face Wolfie was claiming that you know that what was lacking was uh, was was Sterner's sar- sarcasm essentially, mm-hmm. you know. So that kind of put it in a whole new light. So I was kind of, you know kind of looking at that, and I was like, all right, maybe he was you know he was just he was really just poking fun at a lot of this stuff. But yeah, the contract thing, I have an issue with that. Um, more on the basis that I don't even want, like, again, I'm cool with, I'm cool with accepting most things are spooks, but that's what, I guess that's one of my old hang, my hangups from my, from my days of, you know, a pro- being a proper Terry. And it's like, well, no, wait a minute. How can that's, that's not a spook. That's something like a contract, something you're creating with somebody. Yeah. So like, you know, it's not like, that's that I, like, I don't know if you want to call it a spook, fine, but it's a legit thing. And, you know, you know, for even, you know, for, for the reasons that you're describing or just in general, like I'm still a big fan of contracts. Yeah. Uh, and I still think that's, you know, regardless, I don't, I don't, I no longer think of things in these objective terms that I used to, yeah. but a lot of that stuff, I still think, I still personally think is the best way to have a you know quote unquote society function basically you yeah. know what you know at least at least a, a successful one <laughs> yeah so but there well. is there is one objective truth i will say that there's one objective truth and that is zelda breath of the wild is a fucking an amazing game yeah i'm just going to say it if that's objectively true <laughs> Not I will take your I will take your word for it. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm trying to resist the urge because if I, if I cash out any of my crypto, I don't even know if we're going to get to that conversation. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier about talk about mining and stuff, but um, yeah, if I take out any of it, I really should be doing it to pay paying for things <laughs> and not a Nintendo Switch because I cannot. I can. I really should. Even though I do actually have some time right now. Um, I should not be getting immersed in a game that could take up that much of my time. Yeah, you know, because I'm the guy who almost failed out of college uh, the first my first <laughs> semester. I failed out of my first semester because that's when uh, Final Fantasy VII came out for the oh, PlayStation wow. One, and I, you know, I invested hundreds of hours in that game, 
Uh, <laughs> like literally, I think I bought it. It was like it came out like a week, either a week before or a week after the semester started. Yeah, it's it's and, definitely uh, been a hindrance in the things that I want to be doing lately. <laughs> But it's so worth it, though. At the same time, there's a part of me that's like, man, I could have spent so much time because I, the, the the Satan book wasn't the only book that I bought that I really wanted to read. The other one was The Disaster Artist, which I saw the film for, and everybody was saying that there's a lot more stuff in that book that's great. And I ended up getting some time to read the introduction before. Oh yeah, I need to get the another. I need, <laughs> I need to beat the uh, the next Divine Beast uh, in Zelda. Um, but I, the, the introduction chapter was just freaking amazing, but I was like, I don't know. There's, <sighs> I gotta get that lizard on top of the volcano down. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get that gotta get this done, man. It was a part of that too. Oh. Um, and I just haven't had the time to, to crack that book as well. <laughs> well, I, I get it, man. I, I, like I said, I, that's why I've stayed away from, you know, even even though I still still rock on a PS3, I, I still find games that will entertain me for, you know, hours and hours and hours. And on. and I, I can easily get sucked in to them, especially like, uh, you know, times like this where my kids aren't here. And, you know, other than doing, uh, you know, recording a show here and there <laughs> um, and doing my couple hours of a uh, couple, couple, you know, handful of walks that I still have left. Um, I have a lot of time to kill. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite easy for me to fall back into that. So I'm trying really hard not to. <laughs> oh, did you ever get around to seeing the disaster artist? I didn't see the no. I no because I I didn't see the, I didn't see the room until you only don't have uh, to. Uh, really until don't only have a couple to. of weeks ago. You saw you you fin- did you finish watching it? Well, yeah, no, it was more than that. Yeah, it was that t- that when when you were telling, um, we were having that on, on Facebook with Lisa with Lisa uh, Tell the last me show. Apart, Lisa. Yeah, but when we were when we were going back and forth with her, and you were trying to convince her to watch it, I had just I wa- I watched it during that whole thing. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Mind you, you're also the same person that I had to like twist an arm in order to get you to watch the happening because you had a problem with taking my bad movie advice. Yes, after, after a long, long side night. <laughs> and then it made it all worth it. The happening made yeah, it worth no, it. Yeah, right? no. Well, no. And that's, and again, that's why I did say I, I, I said I would watch The Room because like I had heard about it, but I, I guess I ignored the conversations about it. But when it came back up again, I was like, all right, I, I, I was going to give you another chance because you had redeemed yourself with the happening. <laughs> so I was what you were, you were basically back to even again. So you're, you know, I was willing to take another chance on one of your recommendations with these. <laughs> so I watched it. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was painfully funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was like, you know. They should put that on the blurb. On that DVD, painfully funny <laughs> on the DVD, like <laughs> on like so many levels too, because like my face hurt from laughing so hard. It's just like mostly at him, mostly at Tommy and his just like his his just horrible like. I mean, I am not. I am. I am. I am by no means like a, a Broadway actor or anything. But oh my god, like this was re- like I wasn't sure like even knowing everything i knew going in i was like he's he's putting us on right <laughs> he's putting us all on right <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody can be this bad oh hi like, everything is like oh hi Mark. oh, hi, oh Mark. hi steve oh hi clarice <laughs> No, because he did the oh hi. I think it was the oh hi mark he did twice, and they were both like the most. It was the most like weirdest times. Like it was like so like like what was the one time he was just like ranting on about something and just like all of a sudden switched gears to oh hi mark. Yeah, it was it was when he was coming. It's like the most in, infamous scene of the film where he was like, "It's not true. I did not hit her. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not." Oh hi mark. Yes. <laughs> He like threw down the plastic bottle. He's like, "I did not." Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. It's not true. It's uh, don't e- don't even talk about it. Anyway, oh, I think I think <laughs> the best one, the best kind of 
out of nowhere just shift was when he was like he was like you got a you got a new client he's worth millions of dollars who is it i can't talk about it it's confidential oh come on no i can't anyway how is your sex life <laughs> yeah <laughs> what <laughs> Oh, yeah. Just little things like that. Or when he was talking about how how Lisa's mother saw his underwear and and he was like, that's life. (laughs) It it, it is? Like I said, I I, I, I I struggled with believing that it was it wasn't a put on, but he, yeah, I, I made it through, and it was uh, it, well worth it. It was yeah, it was it, like I said, painfully funny is is, is the best description for it because I I laughed till, till my face hurt just watching him struggle through, <laughs> um, through the English language essentially. Um, but he's and, from New Orleans. He's from New Orleans, and 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 just. <laughs> basic human functions you know like walking and talking at the same time like no know? just walking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the scenes of him walking in san francisco are just like well that too i and i didn't want to like you know because as a father of, of a child who has cerebral palsy my instinct was like is there something wrong with him that i don't know about like why does he walk like that i don't know <laughs> i think it was because he wasn't wearing a second belt in that movie <laughs> I think it was the one oh. thing they did convince him not to do was to wear his because usually he wears two belts in real Why? life. Tommy Wayne so wears two belts, and his Why expl- does he do that? the explanation is this is what I got from the introduction of the book is is ones to keep his pants up when one through the loops that's normal, and then the other one goes underneath his butt around like around his his legs and around his butt, and it says that it it uh, holds his butt up and makes it look nice. Ha ha. <laughs> the one thing they convinced him to do is take that second belt off but he still insisted on wearing a blazer with a black shirt and cargo pants and the cargo pants he insisted on having just as much stuff as he could cram into it as possible uh, <laughs> he's a very bizarre man <laughs> he, very yeah bizarre. He, he, he could definitely tell that I'm gonna have to watch the disaster artist because yeah it was it, like it's, yeah, it, it was worth it. It was it was it was funny. So yeah, I, I I laughed till I hurt, and then just it was it was just pain. Like the the acting was so painful. <laughs> just watch. I mean, all of it. Like yeah, the 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 mother in law might have been the most believable out of all of them. Sadly, uh- <laughs> I think the the one act the one actor that did probably the best. Granted, not good. I think direct. I'm going to talk about something else in a second too. Um, the uh, you know even with the bad directing was probably Lisa was probably the only one that seemed remotely human. <laughs> all of them. Um, yeah. I, all right. I guess. Yeah. But in but when she was talking with her mother, I don't know. That's what I'm kind of like. I don't know if she was the best because she kind of had like the same delivery for the whole thing. But then again, you know, direct direction can change a great actor. Terrible. Cause, um, <laughs> so I, I just recently watched and it was so weird that this is, it's almost like topical again. Yeah. Uh, I watched, mean like, look, look, what look, what, look, what, look, what showman did to poor Kevin Sorbo. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Hayden Christensen <laughs> from star Wars. <laughs> Everybody gives him crap about how he's a terrible actor and he's horrible. Why would he choose this guy? And I was watching, because of this discussion, I ended up watching a movie called Shattered Glass. Have you heard about this movie? Uh, I think the title sounds familiar, but I don't. Okay. I, I definitely haven't seen it. It's it's a good movie. It's a really good movie, and it kind of shows that he you know he can't act. He's he's no like Daniel Day Lewis or Philip Seymour Hoffman or. He's not like that level at all, to, just to be, just to be sure. But you know, he can act. It's possible he can act in a movie and and do well. And this was, movie is a good example of it. And um, it's about Stephen Glass, who was a, a writer for the New Republic in the '90s, and he was an up and coming star in, in journalism for a while because he he had like all these really great like finds, like all these great stories. But it turned out that he made like almost all of them up whole cloth he had uh and the one that did that 
did him in was a story about uh, about a 15 year old hacker who hacked a um, uh, a major software company called Juked Electronics, and turned out Juked Electronics didn't exist. Uh, the hacker not only didn't didn't he exist, but everybody he was was talking about his agents and all the other hackers who were helping him and all this other stuff. All of it was just made up. Everything, including the hacker conference, was made up. And uh, wow. And it was a story about how they found out that the story wasn't true. Uh, and the editor started going through all of these other stories and found out they were all untrue as well. And and it's actually a true story. This actually did happen. And they actually had to issue like a major retraction. It was like every one of his stories was wrong. And they were telling which ones were were false. And, uh, you know, he did a good job playing playing that uh, that reporter that made all that stuff up, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he, he cry on command. But there was also a scene in, in uh, I think it was, because I didn't see it, uh, <laughs> Return of, no, uh, Revenge of the Sith, where he actually, there was like a, a scene where he, there was a lot of kind of uh, emotion kind of being played through, like a, a series of emotions in the span of a few seconds where he would, that he portrayed very well. But it's a good example how directors can get a bad performance out of a good actor. So I don't know if Greg Sestero, because he hasn't been in much since. I guess they just came out with another movie, but Tommy Wiseau directed it again, so who knows? <laughs> but, oh, God. But I don't know how bad uh, Greg Sestero is. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, because he was the one that was, even during the filming, knew that it was going to be a bad movie. But that's why he wanted to be involved with it, because <laughs> 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 he knew that he was a character. So. <laughs> but yeah the uh, disaster artist i was gonna say that was my in fact i did tell people like that was the best movie of 2017 was the disaster artist but then i remembered oh yeah logan came out <laughs> that year i i thought it would came out 2016 but i was like oh no i'm sorry logan was a much better movie uh but disaster artist was definitely something i was considering as being like my favorite movie that year for sure <laughs> So yeah, that that year, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> that year, um, yeah, that was a fine uh, yeah. year. Oh, back then, do you remember when Trump was elected? <laughs> when Trump was sworn, but was president. Wow, that was those were the days. Yeah, yeah. I try not to, <laughs> but <laughs> I had a birthday back then, man. Jeez. Um. So should we should we start wrapping things up and talking about Amazon? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so every every so often, with any co-host, I'm uh, actually just Jeremy. Uh, we talk about some of the things <laughs> that were bought with shop Uh It's like the only real way that I'm interested in people helping out the show. That and Patreon, which I do sh- episode. Uh, I do like podcasts every single day. A lot of the time, it's me driving in my car. I'm trying to get away from that and do more like proper podcast me recording you know like talking you know uh, (laughs) into an actual microphone that sounds good not just you know on my cell phone in my car um how do you find topics every day for that that's that's the challenge (laughs) that i'm actually uh, and um so yeah um so this is the other way of doing it that i prefer like if you want to hold on your cryptocurrency in cash that's fine just do Patreon or shop.lowbridge.com, which is an Amazon affiliate link, of course. So we're going to talk about some of the things that people bought. And there's like a lot of higher ticket items since November 22nd, <laughs> which was the last time we were on. Um, so, yeah. So, well, yeah, because, you know, Christmas came and went. So, yeah. But it wasn't. It was capitalism. Yeah, it was less. Uh, it was less things, but bigger ticket items it's so weird that this time around not too many people bought stuff so this was so the first thing they bought was a ubiquity nano station ico m5 by the way i think we're the only other podcast that does this you know i, I think the, yeah. i think the only other podcast that would think about doing something like this would be like you know a really awesome woman doing a show about sex and you know uh, uh you know uh, you know, uh, some some idiot who only likes the prequel or who likes the prequels, Star Wars prequels, <laughs> ruining it. <laughs> That's like the only thing that I can imagine someone doing a thing like this. But anyways, so the Nano Station Loco M Loco Loco M five. I don't know what this is. 
Yeah. I have, I have no idea either. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a wireless Wi-Fi expander thing. It makes your Wi-Fi bigger. Signal bigger. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we had a competent tech person that I knew that I could ask, but I don't. So uh, a <laughs> set of four cord wraps, extension cord wraps. There we go. Uh, they're just little pieces of plastic that you can wrap extension cords around. Uh, or around so extension exciting. cords. All exciting. Then you have Neil Stevenson's Cryptonomicon, which is, uh, from what I hear, a very good book. Uh, I actually, I'm going to say who, I, I know who did this and I know, I know that they wouldn't care. So I'm going to say it. If you, if you buy this, I don't know who's buying these things at all. I just don't know unless you tell me. And if you tell me, I'm not going to say it unless you uh, tell me to say, but I, I, he didn't tell me to say this, but I know that he's, he would want me to, I don't know, whatever. It's running the end of the show when I'm out of caffeine. God damn it. Uh, Cryptonomicon, Neil Stevenson, uh, Brandon Von Stormhaven, Baron Von Stormhaven had bought this for himself uh, for Capitalismus, um, which is a really good book I, from what I hear, and it's very big. <laughs> this is a lot to read here. Um, with this extraordinary first volume, it promises to be an epic-making masterpiece. Neil Stevenson hacks into the secret histories of nations and private obsessions of men, decrypting with dazzling veracity the uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so basically, it's about like uh, c- cypherpunks. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The Virtue of Selfishness, the 15th anniversary edition. I think this is Rand, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Ayn Rand. Yeah. Well, I ha- That's one of those books I have on my Kindle. I still haven't got around to reading yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, weren't you, didn't you say you were an objectivist for a while? No, I said I was never. I was never an objectivist. Oh, okay. I've never actually read. I've never actually read any Rand. Wow, I I read um, Anthem. I have some of it. I just haven't read it. Yeah, I, I've read Anthem, and that was good. That was really good. And then I read the first part of Atlas Shrugged, and it was just like I'm going to get through the first part. Like halfway, halfway reading the thing, I was like, okay, I have to finish at least the first part. I have to finish it. <laughs> and then I'm done because I, I can't stand that style, the style of writing that was in it. I liked the story and I ended up just reading the Cliff Notes version and I was like, I'm done with Rand. Done. I'll read her nonfiction stuff, but this is this is too much. Um, the next thing that someone bought was uh, a paperback novelization of Blade Runner. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. Blade Runner was actually a book by Philip K. Dick. Holy shit. I'm an idiot. <laughs> the movie was good. <laughs> the sequel was even better. Um, I guess I'm going to have to check that one out because that sounds interesting. Might is Right by Ragnar Redbeard. Mm. Mm. The precursor, Fitting. Yeah, precursor to egoism with extra misogyny, anti-Semitism, and racism. Oh, okay. Is that um, what it says? <laughs> no, no, no. This is just <laughs> oh. basically like Max Turner kind of got a lot of ideas from him, and he kind of took all most of that stuff out. He was like, "Oh, no, no, no." Yes, yeah, so I've heard again. I've one of these one of these things. I've heard you speak of this. I've I've never I've never got around to reading that. Yeah, you, you heard. I you started. I started with Turner. I've heard. Yeah, but I've heard. It, I've heard before. I've heard you talk, talk about it before. I mean, too. Yeah. I know um, um, James Weeks is like a big fan of this book, but I, I guarantee yes. you, he's not definitely a fan of the the more unsavory parts of that book for sure. Um, the Barry- I don't know with James. You never know. He's, yeah. a, he's an interesting guy that way. Yeah, he'll be, he, be like, "Oh, white supremacy ain't so bad." Uh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Them spooks, nice spooks, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Behringer HPS 3000 Studio Headphones. These actually look pretty nice, but I don't know. Behringer is... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. They're, they're, they're 20 bucks, though. Oh. I have a I have a pair of... I like my mixer. I don't know about headphones. Their mixers aren't yeah. bad. I like Sony. Sony is really good about having really high-quality stuff that's really cheap. Unless you get their, I, like, yeah. studio-quality stuff. <laughs> then it starts getting a little bit more expensive. But these I bought for Walmart for, like... 15 or 20 bucks somewhere in there i don't remember yeah. and they're really awesome they sound fucking amazing my, but my first my first my first pair of podcasting headphones were a 15 dollar pair of sony's that lasted me for like a year and a half using them like re- a, a lot because i was doing a lot of recording um until they finally rip dropped in peace. out on me rip in peace 
Yeah. Houston, then, you know, 1 to 12, Cologne. <laughs> I've never heard of this cologne. I I wouldn't know. The last thing I was wear the last thing I was wearing before I stopped really caring about cologne and stuff was back in the days of cool water. <laughs> cool water. <laughs> my favorite is I still I still have that. I still have I still have a, a bottle of it in my medicine cabinet. I actually still enjoy the smell of it. But hmm. Yeah, that was the last thing I cared about, you know. And how long ago was that? When was that popular? <laughs> a while ago. I End like of the 90s, early like, 2000s maybe. Yeah, Giorgio Armani Mania and Blue Jeans. Those are the two I kind of jump between. I really like those ones. One's Versace and one's Giorgio Armani, so I mean, they can get kind of expensive, but you can get uh you can get them pretty cheap at like uh what is the store? Uh, Barrington Coat Factory. Burlington. Burlington. There we go. Yeah. So show how much I shop for cologne. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the store I bought it at. Um, I, I didn't even know they sold cologne. Him Dragon's Blood Incense. I think this is the same. I don't know if it's the same manufacturer, but maybe the same distributor as like the people that make Nog Champa. It's definitely not the same stuff for sure. It looks very different. Uh, Nog Champa is amazing. I don't know about all this. Sounds like some pagan, right. pagan bullshit to me. That might go with one of the <clears> books <throat> that was bought. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my theory. Abyssal, <laughs> Abyssal 959, 9595A clean view bagless vacuum with one pass. Oh, a whole vacuum. Yeah. Nice. The vacuum only, though. They did. They didn't get the uh, one with the uh, deodorizer bundle, or the uh, stain remover bundle, or the easy maintenance bundle, or the odor eliminator bundle. They're really kind of chintzing out here, chintzing out. By the way, don't ever, ever, ever buy carpet shampoo, and never, ever, ever buy spot remover. Ever. Don't do it. Don't stop. Uh, don't. It's bad. No, yes. you do this. No, I was gonna. No, I was. I do. I used. To, I was a carpet cleaner for years before I got, got into the pet setting business. So you know, it's a huge scam, right? <laughs> I, I just. I, I know it's. I, I know it's. It's a waste. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. It's. It's. It's absolute crap. Yeah. If, if, if you're gonna get. If you're gonna get your carpets cleaned, you gotta get them professionally done. Um, because that you you can clean them and they can you know. I've I've seen what can get done with those things that you know they tell people tell you know, oh yeah steam your, you know get your little get that little carpet cleaner thing and you do that all you're doing is just filling your carpet with with soap yeah and soap is literally attracts. Hitler yeah <laughs> yeah all all it does is all it does is attra- all, all attract more crap yeah think think about it this is the way I used to explain it when I used to be a carpet cleaner it's interesting I didn't know you were a carpet cleaner we should have known this we had, we had we had to do the hand signal I guess we didn't do the hand signal uh, yeah but, there you go <laughs> but it's basically like a uh, sidewalk if you see like a sidewalk and you know most of it's you know the the concrete itself is probably going to be fairly clean but you'll see gum that's black and you know that no one eats black gum I think there's like three people left that still like licorice gum. Like one of them is me, but for the most part, like no one, <laughs> no one you choose black gum, right? It's what happened is it, it's sticky and it attracts dirt and it holds on to it. That's what soap does on your carpet. So when every time that you use soap or hire a, a steam cleaner that uses a lot of soap, uh, your carpet's going to get dirtier faster. The best thing to do club soda for spot cleaning. Uh, everything else, just use hot water. If you rent one of those machines, just run hot water through it first and to clean out whatever is left in there and then just use hot water. That's fine. Or hire a professional that does not use soap. Um, yeah, just don't do it. It's, it's, a, it's a giant scam to try to get you to come back. They, do, they know this. All these carpet cleaners that use soap, they know that, that, <laughs> that you're going to be putting soap down on your carpet and they're going to have to come back even sooner. So just don't, 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 don't. Porta Pow data blocker a usb adapter was what is this porta pow data blocker usb adapter with smart charge that's a mouthful so yeah it's, it's basically a, a condom a computer condom so trying we can uh, air trying to air gap their computer <laughs> yeah yeah so you basically just so you can still charge devices without having any kind of data leaks going back and forth which is useful i should probably get something like that because i know like especially like now that i'm you know i do too because i use i use the 
Oh, I use almost all the USB ports on my one laptop, most of them for charging purposes. <laughs> yeah. And I know that they just had a thing with vapes. People were hacking yep. vapes. That's and that's that's one of the things I that's one of the things I do. I have like multiple vape batteries charging at once and yeah. my phone usually gets charged through it. I should probably buy one of these things. And it was only eight bucks. Oh, there you go. Yeah. A Samsung. I probably, okay. I should probably I was gonna say I probably have I probably I probably can afford that on the on, the, on what I have on my Amazon gift card balance. <laughs> I should probably get one one or two. There we go. A Samsung five hundred and twelve gig SATA three PM blah 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 SD uh solid state SD card. Yeah, so could have just saved a whole I bunch of I just got trouble. one of those. Yeah. Did you buy it through me? Don't get me busted, nah. man. Because you 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 got <laughs> you got Amazon affiliate aids. I don't I don't remember. <laughs> I I don't I honestly don't remember whose link I used. Um, no, I, yeah, I, I I bought my first solid state drive when I <laughs> built my mining my mining rig. Nice. Happy Fish's xylophone with multi bright multi colored keys. You know those little like ding ding ding. Uh, yes. Kid xylophones. Yes, I probably still have one around my house somewhere. Yeah. And then someone bought an Intel i5-76000 LGA processor desktop. Wow, they went all out. Yeah, huh? they went all out. <laughs> they got the good stuff. They didn't, not, they didn't yeah. no no expenses is spared or what what's the yeah. term? like <laughs> Yeah, um, man. Yeah. I, what what they they have the i9s now. Well, I should I should I shouldn't say that. I just I just bought I just bought something like that. I think mine was only like an i seven or something like that. Well, just, I or, I sevens are pretty good, but i nine. No, not even. Be, I think it was even i six maybe. Yeah, um, it was a high tier. It was a crap one for my again for my mining rig. <laughs> I didn't buy very. You know, I bought what was necessary. So we got Anchor Sound Bud Surge Bluetooth Headphones Lightweight Sports Ear. What's with all the SEO titles? Just. It's their head buds. They're Bluetooth earbuds. You know the wired ones that go behind your head, but they're still Bluetooth. Ear, uh, earbuds. I hate the earbuds. I have Bluetooth. I I have Bluetooth headphones that I use for constantly. I love them, but they're not earbuds. I can't stand earbuds. They're like the big cushy ones that go over, that hang over the back of your ear. This one's interesting. Get ready for this. Are you sitting down? I hope so. Yes. A, a cult, uh, okay. <clears throat> the occult technology of power, the initiation of the son of a finance capitalist into the arcane secrets of economic and political power. Whoa. There's a lot to digest in that title. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Let's see. This program. Uh, this is the program of the 1%. <laughs> Is that a um, book or a video or what? Okay, so it, the Occult of Technology of Power is a blueprint distilling the esoteric doctrines and techniques of the global elite. These initiatory lessons from a cadre of technocrats is available with a never-before-collected appendix of revolutionary information. I still have no idea what this is about. <laughs> Is is this like like one of those books where you like you're gonna summon the Antichrist in order to increase your stock portfolio? I don't know. <laughs> or is it saying I, that like George Soros does spirit cooking uh, so that he can make more money to to ruin the? I don't know. Mm. I I don't know. It's very very unclear. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know. I don't know if this is the digital version or if they got a Blu-ray version of it, but I will definitely recommend. This was definitely one of high, high running on my list of the best movies of last year, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Now I think mm. that anybody who would put this at the at the very top of their list as the best movie is definitely a buffoon, definitely <laughs> a buffoon, unequivocally a buffoon. It's a great film, but is it better than Logan? No. Is it better than uh, The Disaster Artist? No. It's really good. And there was a lot of stuff in this movie that I was like, this movie, I will say, for it, the, the one flaw that I actually don't consider too much of a flaw because I liked it at points, but it really was a drawback f for a lot of other th reasons, was there was a lot of kind of drawn out things that were really trying to get you to just breathe in the atmosphere of this movie, which was very beautiful. But it was, seemed it got kind of boring at parts. But 
there was a lot of effects in this movie that really brought me back to when I was a kid watching movies and going, how did they do that? Like, I don't like I've never done that with a film in the last five or six years. I have not ever thought like, how did they do that? You know, mm, yeah. it's so easily answerable, it's just computers. But I'm looking at this going like, OK, com- just computers does not answer that. <laughs> <laughs> it does not answer that question anymore. There was a lot of stuff like there was a scene between uh, uh, a sex scene between a replicant. I think she was a replicant too. But there was a, a hooker and uh, the replicant. Uh, what's the fuck is his name? God damn it! He's a great actor. Jesus Christ! I'm looking at the fucking thing and it tells me right here, Ryan Gosling. God damn it! So Ryan <laughs> Gosling, this 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 prostitute and a hologram are having sex, but the hologram is overlaid on top of the actress. But they're real actresses being overlaid with each other so they have to be moving at the exact same time for in order for this to work and i just you know mm. and not it can't just be a, like a, a 3d rendering of like the two actresses at the same time because there's parts where they don't move at the exact same part so they kind of uh-huh. like kind of shift a little bit and it's weird but then there's other uh, like there's other moments where they're moving exactly the same it is so weird but there's like mm. I just did not know how they did that. But that's the end of the list. That's the end of the list. Yeah. But what what kind of person would would put this at the top of their list? Like so, I I don't know. <laughs> probably someone who likes the Matrix Revolutions. It's quite possible. Yeah. Although having not seen it, I I can't really speak to it. Oh, you're lucky because it was a terrible film. Oh no! I've I've seen the Matrix Revolution. Oh, I was oh, referring oh, to oh. I was referring to Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good movie. I definitely recommend watching it. But I don't know how you could watch it and then walk away saying that that was the best movie last year. I can't even remember how many movies that came out last year. I actually saw. I did see Logan, and that was definitely the tops for me. So yeah. you got to check out the Disaster Artist. This one too, but you definitely won't place this one on the top of your list. Did you like the original Blade Runner? I actually had never seen the original Blade Runner. <laughs> wow. Okay. I have a weird mo- like I've seen so many movies and read so many things in my life, but I tend to like end up missing a lot of like big ones that most people are like, you I know. Do too. I do too. It was the same it was the same thing, you know, and up until I don't know. I guess I was dating Jen for like maybe a year or two before, and that was you know we've all, we we were only together six seven years, no seven eight years at this point I guess now. Um, so yeah, it was only like six years ago that I finally saw The Godfather. Nah. Um, you know, Overrated. but like I know, but like anything like that, like just like big, you know, you know, regardless of <laughs> regardless of how good they actually are, just like bigger st- bigger movies like that, I've tend to miss out on because I just never got around to watching them. I just watched a whole bunch of other shit. Um, what was it? Um, so I I had did not see this for like the longest time, and it wasn't until like I think the year before, so 2016, where uh, my friend Dylan was like, "You you got to watch this movie. You never seen it." And I was like, I'll, I'll get around to watching Blade Runner, whatever. Um, and then, you know, he, he gave me a link to, or he, he told me what particular version I should rent from the public library <clears throat> because there's like 5 million different versions of this movie. If you get the theatrical cut, it's actually really bad. <laughs> but if you watch like some of the other ones, like the director's cut or the final cut, like those ones are all great. But the one with the theatrical one where it has the narration by Harrison Ford, it really ruins it. Um, but he, he told me to get the the one of the one of the cuts, one of the the other cuts, the non theatrical cuts, and it was really good. But there's a lot of moments in the movie where it's just like dragged on, and it and I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it because it gets boring. But at the same time, you're really giving time to just breathe in the very the 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 atmosphere of the movie and the very like the 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 vistas or whatever <laughs> but the way the, <laughs> but they're very beautiful like the 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 way they made that movie even in the 80s it's really kind of mind bending like like how do they do that um and blade runner the, the new one really kind of brought that back where i was wondering like i have no idea how they did this scene like it just you know cgi does not answer the question of how they made that 
Um, <laughs> it was really, it's a really good, they're really good movies, but you may be bored by them. There's a lot of people that don't like it. So uh, I can understand why people don't like it. And I understand people who, who want to jerk off all over themselves all over. But the second one, no, not the best movie of 2017. Not the best. <laughs> not the best. Oh. I mean, Underworld was one of their top runnings. I mean, are you serious? <laughs> Underworld? <laughs> Horrible, horrible people. <laughs> horrible people who don't like contracts. But anyways, so we're wrapping this up. Do you want to link your stuff? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Um, Plug your shit. Yeah, well, all, 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 most of my stuff could be found at uh, solpodcast.org. Um, or if you if you do use Steam it, um, I know Jim doesn't. <laughs> We could have done but a whole do. show about how much I hate Steam. It, but go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I was, I was anti Steam it for, uh, for, for up until like very recently, and only because I'm looking for pretty much any any avenue to make money at the current moment, um, without you know without having to do too much more work because that that's that is the beauty of it. Like I don't put out too much content, um, but I do have a backlog of stuff that I can just start dumping there, especially with DTube and stuff. And, uh, you know, even, even memes, I've, I have a couple like, you know, a couple of memes that have made like six or $7 already. So <laughs> nice. I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm, I, I don't really, I don't necessarily care about the technology and what they're doing. Um, you know, I'm just going to cash out when Apparently I can. One of the founders doesn't either. Cause he's bolted. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I don't, re- you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's not one of the crypt. It's not like I'm into it for their crypto. I have other, other I have other cryptos for that. It's just a, it's just a thing to try to make money. Anyway, so if you so, steam yeah. it, if you steam it, uh, abol- I think it was it. abolitionist J is uh, me, just like my Twitter. So, anyway, yeah, or the Freedom Fiends, which you know, I'm still there. <laughs> I'll be on tonight. Actually, I gotta, I gotta record. I, I gotta record there in less than an hour. So, yeah. You know, I think next year instead of doing a Deadpool, I should do a, a Fiends Deadpool. Like, what Fiends are gonna get fired next? <laughs> 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 That's gonna be the <laughs> the cryptocurrency Deadpool, and then the that might be Fiend Deadpool. Fiend. Uh, on, w- <laughs> on one hand, that might be too easy because so many get fired in the yeah. course of a year. Um. Well, which one's you know. gonna get fired first? Make your predictions. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's been ones that I think have actually been fired twice in the same year. I, um, I think that's actually happened because wasn't that you? When it, no, I was only officially fired once. Um, okay. <laughs> but I think uh, I think other people have because there's plenty of people who, who were either quit or fu- got fired and then came back multiple times. Yeah. So, so seize a liberty. uh, SOL. You won't be SOL if you listen to SOL. Yeah. All right, man. Great talking with you again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hail Satan. Good times. (laughs) Hail hail Satan. (laughs) We're your wigwam. (laughs) 